This is Business Inspired. Today we are at the Backyard Cafe with Chef Delvin Adams. And we will be discussing food. We'll be discussing how Delvin has been able to add his flair to traditional Guyanese food. Delvin, the first thing I'm going to ask you is how did you come up with the concept of Backyard, backyard Cafe? Well, it was it, it was always something for, uh, that I had in the back of my head. I w always wanted to own my own restaurant, and um, I wanted to do uh, rustic. And this was never done before here in Ghana, so I said, you know what? Why not do it this way? And and it was ideas that we were pitching around, and uh, friends is like, you think it's gonna work? It's not gonna work. And we went with the majority. I said it's gonna work. And a few people said it wasn't going to work, and I was I was majority, so majority win. And I said we are going to do it right here in my backyard, and it kicked off and went nicely. Now, food is usually um, food identifies people, it identifies culture, and it yes, usually it opens brings people up. People. Yep, brings people together from the beginning of time. That's what food uh, did. So, what has been the response like since you? opened up your backyard the response from from people from coming from russia germany france uh uh netherlands i mean wow I, I to name them we had royalties here you know so i'm happy that we get we get the opportunity to share what guyanese cuisine is like to the world mm -hmm. now when you started you started basically preparing traditional Guyanese food but you you kind of added your own fusion flavor to it. right flares fusion because um, that's what that's what uh, 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 food is right food is never to the bottom it always you, you always want to get it to rise to the top you want to get the flavor out there you want to get uh, grandma recipe to the top of the scale you see so and the same thing you do do with do with our food right you don't want it to just stay basic mm -hmm. you see uh, we're talking about this but look at our Chinese 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 cuisine the Asian cuisine that we have here in Ghana there's no part of the world can cook like our Asian people Right, the food is not going to taste the same. I don't care where you go; you have to come to Ghana to taste what the Guyanese Chinese food tastes like. You see, mm -hmm. and they are always raising the, the 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 level on that when it when it comes to that 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 food here, right here in Ghana, right under our nose. Based on what you would have done with um, the traditional um, dishes, how do you measure the the success? Um. This is why we, we, we have folks tell us about it because for me to sit here and say, okay, yes, we made it, I'm never going to do that because that's where, that's where we reach a point to say, well, okay, I made it, this is it, the recipe, we don't, we don't need to vamp it up anymore, but let other people do it and then we keep going. We keep going to hear what, what what somebody else has to say, hear what another country has to say. We are hearing from Suriname, we hear from from um, Venezuela. Our neighboring country love the, the the cuisine now even more, right? So, hearing what more and more people has to say is what keeps me motivated to, to do it different and 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 again vamp it up, bring it up to the top. What is it that people when they come to the backyard um, cafe? What are they mostly interested in? The first is, 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 is the nature, the concept was being open and you're watching the birds eating from the planting right there. Um, you could lie down in the hammock and, and get a cocktail, drink your coconut and rum in the, in the hammock. Um, folks just want to be at home now. And that's what the Backyard Cafe was from the beginning home away from home literally it's a home away from home Delvin could you give us a tour of the the backyard cafe well it's, it's, it's gonna be a, a, a slight small little tour right here right 
So as you enter into the backyard, you get to see the sign of the Backyard Cafe. You see uh, on, on the wall, you get to see our national bird, our national flower, um, the Amerindian headdress. That is a must, must represent well for our country. Then as you come in here now, you see the guitar. The guitar looks simple, right? But this guitar, Eddie Grant signed the guitar, right? So it's one of my prized possessions. I'm in love with Eddie Grant, his music. Um, he's Guyanese, obviously, right? And we are going to put him on a pedestal. So you're going to see that as you come in, right? The hammock. Got to the end of the hammock. This is, this is my getaway, my getaway from, from it all. You're not going to see me sporting in tongue and jumping up and things like that. You're going to see me right here in this hammock on my day off, <laughs> right? I, 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 again, music, I want, I want, I like, I like music, right? You're going to see this here. You, this is one of the, um, this chair is about 50 years old, over 50 years old right here. Where the back used to come down, old time something, right? The Morris chair. Yeah. And the person who gave me this chair, well, they were throwing it out. By the time I get to the spot, two of the, the, the set already went in the garbage. So I, this is the only one I got. So when I showed him what I did with the chair again, he was like, wow. Right? So, and here is where we call the pallet section, right? This is where we, um, we started with the pallet section. It would, we keep moving it forward. And this is where everyone wants to come and sit, relax, lie down, put their feet up, and eat in the pallet section. We have a table that can fit 15 to 18 people. No one wants that table out. Everyone wants to come here in this cozy spot, sit, relax, and enjoy. We just had uh, a family of um, 12. Yes. 10, yeah. A family of 10 came to have breakfast, and breakfast was consist of pepper pot, Guyanese tradition, um, bailan fry. So not a, it, 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 bailan fry is a very unique uh, 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 meal to get into. We can get into that a little bit. We had uh, our famous coconut bread and our coconut bake, the fry bake, right? We had the uh, the curry and the roti for breakfast. And they had a lovely breakfast, right? So just had the family came here and sit, sat along with that. And when we started the Backyard Cafe, this was the spot. This is where we started right here. Right, with this square piece of thing right here. It was just a little concrete spot and we had sand all around. And I, and I was cooking place. with a tire rim over there. We didn't have the fire as yet. Cooking with a tire rim and we had folks sitting on, on, on the sand with uh, yo on yoga mats. Uh -huh. Yeah, <laughs> yes. right? So this is it right here. So I cherish this little spot to show people that this is where it all began. You see? And it started as, as, a, as a dream and friends and family in the uh, diaspora also saw that it was going to be something and, and they also chipped in and said, hey, you know what? I'm going to be there for you. Whatever it is that you need, I'm going to help you. So it was also, it, it wasn't just me alone. It's a, it's a whole group of us thinking and, and getting this done and, and pushing the Guyanese food to the next level. So I'm happy for folks being around us and helping us to get there. Right? What has this actually done for the West Randall community? Well, um, let me just say this. The guys you see working here, we have um, Johans, Kellan, we have a few more, right? They're from this community. They're from the school next door. I wouldn't hire... A, people from a different community or coming far far away i want these folks here to get this experience you see the stigma of what west Rheinveld had somewhat is gone because of what we did we have senators and and high diplomats coming here at the Backyard Cafe and these guys are getting to meet them. When a few years ago you would see them on the street and it's like, you know, oh he's from West Rheinveld and whatever stigma comes with West Rheinveld that, 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 that is, that, that's it. But I know the kids out there knows 
what this is doing for West Wine Belt. And I wish, and thank you for bringing that, that, that up, right? My hope is to, is to have the people here in Guyana see that and also help chip in, also help build your community also to make your community better. So we, we need more Guyanese doing stuff like that. And we need more of the people, the leaders that watching and seeing and said, hey, you know what? What can we do, Backyard Cafe, Delvin, to help your community to get there? Because these guys never had a, a thought that, hey, you know what? I'm going to be traveling. Now they're getting to travel, they're getting to meet Hollywood celebrities. And I'm talking Hollywood celebrities. Like uh, a few weekends ago, we, we, <laughs> we were out in Linden talking to a big time producer, sit down eating white pudding, right? And these guys never had an idea that this was going to happen. They're, and they're from this community, right? So talking to a producer that's going to be doing things here in Ghana, right? Can't ask for a better experience. Can't ask for a better experience, right? And I wouldn't ask for, for other people other than these guys right here, see? so. They're the community, they're the backbone of the community, and they're young, and whenever they leave here to go do something else, they take in this experience outside. Delphin, what food actually means to you? Well, asking, I'm a foodie, right? Asking me a question like that, and I give you the answer, the first thing Guyanese people can say, well, he's a scraven man, boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's how much I like food. From the beginning, I have a, a, a mark on my in, on my leg right here, right? And when you look at it, you see like, wow, that's a serious burn. I was three years old. My mother finished um, sugar cake. Tip up to the table, flip the whole sugar cake pan. So the hot sugar cake fall upon my foot right there, so, and melt in. Oh. So that's a lifetime oh. mark that I have here. So when you look at it, you know that it's something, and, and you see the sugar cake print that on my foot still. Three years old, in the kitchen, stretching and eating food. And um, as I got older, I realized what, what that was, because I'm always eating, right? As a mm -hmm. kid, I was always eating. And, Mom would cook the bile and fry, right? She would cook the, um, do a, a, a roast cassava on with fish. And I'm like, I want to eat all the cassava. I want to eat all of that fish. But it was getting the taste of the food. It was understanding flavor. Now I can, I can, I can smell the food and I can tell you, okay, we need some more salt in that thing there. We need the season because I've had it so much. I've enjoyed it so much. I can tell you without even touching it that something is not right. But if you tell, if people hear all them stories there, again, they get set of mine, they're greedy, man, but yeah, I would eat, I would eat as a little kid, I would eat, and then they would have to put me under the pipe and soak me and take it. You can't move. <laughs> but I was, I was just understanding food, getting, getting in the whole realm of food. I am sure that you will, you know, go around to other eating houses and, and sample, um, their meals do you get a feeling that we don't really experiment with spices a lot that's one we we don't we we're afraid we, we we're afraid to as a people in Ghana, right mm -hmm. we're gonna step out to the whole food thing just a little bit right mm -hmm. you go in a minibus and and you tell the minibus to turn the music down and everybody turn around look at you like what he just said that like you're not supposed to, right? I'm, I'm supposed to be afraid. Driver, slow down. <gasps> you don't tell the driver to slow down. No, I can tell the driver to slow down because I'm not, I'm, I'm not afraid. I, 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 I want to be alive for tomorrow. I want to see all of these things happen that, that's happening, right? I want to see more and more. I want to see growth, you see? So when it comes to food now, I just add that in. I'm not afraid to experiment. What goes good with this? Can coconut milk and lime go together? Everyone says, oh, no, you can't do it so. Squeeze coconut milk, tastes good, good, cook it. That's true. 
I experiment and I make my own vinegar. Oh. I make my gooseberry vinegar. The garlic pork that we just served, that was made with my gooseberry vinegar. How do you right? make gooseberry vinegar? <laughs> and I boil the gooseberry with the sugar, just like you're making gooseberry syrup, but you don't add all that sugar and thing, right? Mm -hmm. Little little secret, right? So you get the gooseberry syrup thing going with all your spices and stuff, and you keep it, you keep want to keep that sourness, but you still want to have that dark, rich color from the gooseberry syrup thing, right? And you let all the juice and everything, just let it sit and ferment. After that cook, you let it sit and ferment about six weeks, six to eight weeks, you got vinegar. I can try. I mean, I... <laughs> It's a little bit more things that you got to do there. I, I don't try, I don't try it. I you don't try it. ain't giving out I, everything. I like food. I like food. And Good. I, I try it. Now, we're going to sample some of the um, the food that Delvin would have prepared for us. In front of me, I have beef pepper pot. Bush tea. True. Bush yes. tea, which is um, daisy and lemongrass. That's it. We have We have the fish and curry roti. with the roti. And if you notice, the curry is not your typical lunch or dinner curry and there's difference with your um, with your curry so when you cook in the curry early in the morning you don't want to have that heavy taste of curry so this is your, your morning curry you can still get a curry mm. flavor but it's not as heavy it's not as pungent so there's curry and you add um, like tomato yeah. um, sauce in it because yeah well, no, no tomato sauce no you just, just the tomato fresh you tomato add, fresh tomatoes you add to it fresh tomato okay, even if I'm making see. tomato sauce I make my own tomato sauce oh. Well, every Guyanese mm -hmm. is going to do the same with mm -hmm. when it comes to pepper pot. You don't make joke with Guyanese and the pepper pot, bye. You don't. <laughs> you don't make joke with Guyanese and the pepper pot. And they try to scold me like, you don't use lobby in the pepper pot. When we did the Gordon Ramsay mm -hmm. show thing. But we were showing off Amerindian cuisine. Mm -hmm. Right? And the pepper pot is basically Amerindian cuisine. And yes, the Amerindians never came to town at the butcher shop and buy meat and carry it in back. They always hunt Hunted, and yeah. fish for their meals. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. labo was mm -hmm. one of the things that they use and still use it. This is perfect, okay. I should say as usual because I've been here before. So for people <laughs> who have not been here and have not experienced this, you miss not a lot. And imagine me now as a kid tasting all of that, right? And I can't stop eating. I see the food and it tastes so good. I got to keep eating, mm -hmm. eating. Now I understand food, I, I just, I go back into my childhood and in, in my head, I'm like, I do the reverse every time. How did it taste? And if I felt that good when eating food, mm -hmm. there must be a hundred people like myself. Exactly. So I would always do that to please other people. I want that feeling to come out with other people. Last night we had someone eat our cheesecake and was in tears eating a passion fruit cheesecake no kidding crying tears like man passion fruit cheesecake crying tears now as you mentioned passion fruit cheesecake above us are the passion fruit uh, vines We're yes the passion fruit pagoda so fruit. yeah right here my passion fruit there it going down a little bit i gotta replant again by the rain messes up from September and mm. then the sun came out and it's like it's giving me a beating. But I got passion fruit vine olive. I love passion fruit. I love the flavor passion fruit gives. So you see me with my passion fruit pepper sauce. I got though. You see me with the passion fruit cheesecake. We got that. Right? We got the man passion fruit jam to eat the cassava bread with. And they go crazy for the passion fruit jam and cassava bread. You have cassava. Yeah, yeah. You have the cassava, um, the passion fruit jam, right? And because I have cassava bread at home. Oh, oh, so good I lord, mean, no. I won't go and try. The vine dry up, so <laughs> passion fruit gonna come back in another couple of weeks. Right. Yeah. Apart, I mean, you have not li you have not limited um, the backyard cafe to just um, preparing Guyanese meals. No, because. Um, Guyanese want to experience the world without going. We got COVID right now, ain't nobody traveling. Mm -hmm. But everybody watching Netflix, everybody watching television, cooking shows, everybody think, can I have this? Can I try that? And, and why not? I'm not going to tell them no. But remember, I'm going to start the meal Guyanese first. Mm -hmm. 
right? See if you want chicken French here, I can I can I can put some curry inside. <laughs> you understand? I can use coconut milk for my sauce. Coconut milk and the egg and, and my egg wash. And I can dash some curry inside there. And I can give you that Guyanese flavor and thing, and you got a nice chicken French here, but different. Right? So that's about it. I, I, I do um you want you want your spaghetti and meatballs? I, I can I can give you some real Guyanese spaghetti and meatballs. I cook I cook a nice um spaghetti with uh, uh, the champion chow mein, oh. and nobody didn't even know. Well, that's true. I mean, we we go and buy the. I did a seafood. Yeah, I did a seafood last Christmas. I did a seafood um, um, noodles with the champion chow mein for some folks that they travel the world. They went to all the restaurants you could think of. From Bobby Flay to Gordon Ramsay restaurant, they went to all these restaurants, right? And said, "Okay, I'm gonna get a lobster, right? Nice clams and everything. Boom, Biari chow mein. <laughs> Put that in there, and I made a nice seafood uh, 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 spaghetti, man. It was, it was, it, it was. They're still talking about it today. Wow. Like they had friends on the table. Hey, um, can you?" do some of that for me you know it's like still getting that today so i'm, I'm happy <laughs> i know that persons will have to make appointments to come to the um the backyard cafe not that's how we started that's how we started from the beginning because we want to be able to know what 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 you're about when it comes to food you're not just coming and sit down and eating a food mm -hmm. right every meal has a story where the fish came from that that you were having i went out this morning at four o'clock and i went and get trout because that's what the people ask for mm -hmm. i am not going to give you frozen fish because that's not i i charge for the fish you understand mm -hmm. i pay those guys cash money for the fish so you're not gonna do go through that and then freeze the people fish and put it on the yeah. table you understand they want fresh fish that's what i'm gonna give to them right mm -hmm. and making the reservation is not just oh here's a table you you get a reservation it's you telling us exactly what it is the experience that you're looking for mm -hmm. i want to experience a fish curry early in the morning right i don't know i gotta go and get fresh fish what type of fish you like right there's other fish other than trout bangamiri and and and, and snapper so i would go out and get those exotic fish that guyana has and i would put it out there but this morning they wanted specifically trout so i went out and i got the trout this morning oh. right if someone is allergic to something i need to know you see so you let us know and we prepare that for you you're not going to come and say oh but i don't eat dog look the pumpkin there so i don't eat pumpkin you didn't tell me. That's true. Well, Delvin. Right, so. I will thank you for this opportunity that you would have given us today. Yes, you are most welcome. And, and I will say for persons who have not experienced the Backyard Cafe, to please do so. Um, apart from, the, from coming and eating at the Backyard Cafe, I'll allow Delvin to tell us about just two other ventures that he's into before we close it off because the music next door is getting louder yes not just not just two is uh, uh, yeah i give you two we have the bicycle rental um that we're doing uh, that's gonna start up back again we have the market tour that's already blown up now right the market tour border market market tour we have the farm tour Oh. And we have a few farms that we're working with. As soon as Suriname open up back, we have the culinary tour. Oh. We already started that uh, three, four years ago. And every year we would take a, a group of folks to Suriname and they get to experience Guyanese food going all the way to Suriname. Suriname food all the way going to the hotel for, for a weekend getaway. And then you eat in all weekend. So all of that we were into. So all about food. <laughs>